Okay. All right. So, hi guys. Um, welcome to our webinar. So, um, just a little bit more about Inky Learning, like what we are doing right now. So, we are basically a, a small collective of uh, graduates. So, we've all graduated from, uh, you know, JC, done our A-levels. Some of us a few years back, some of us last year. And yeah, we, we aim to provide accessible, efficient and quality academic help. Um, that is free for all like, in a sense. So that's why we, we created this like community, um, including you guys. I don't know if you all are in the Discord community, but that's where we predominantly sort of like operate. Like. Yeah. So if you're not there yet, we don't worry about it. We have a QR code at the end of this session. You guys can join it. And um, yeah, trust me, like, it's, a good, it's a good idea. Yeah, we have a lot of resources and help there. So yeah, we really want to help you guys maximize your potential and sort of make learning easier for you guys. Because as students ourselves, we relate to you guys. Like, we know how it feels like. You know, the emotional burden, um, how sometimes studying for exams can really be very tiring and mentally taxing. And we want to do our best to sort of help you guys with that because we've gone through it, we know how you feel. And yeah, so it's very normal to feel stressed out, definitely. So yeah, we really want to try to inspire you guys to um, not just, you know, internalize the concepts, but also be able to appreciate, um, I guess, the reason why we study these kind of subjects, like the beauty behind it as well. That's how we get the most, you know, passionate people in our team. Yeah. So that's a bit more about Inky. If you guys want to find out more, you can approach any of us for, you know, the, the admins here, um, Lizard, Steffi, myself, and Sean as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next. All right, so today's um, webinar is about how to win at organic chemistry. And the reason we chose organic chemistry is, is actually based on your requests, actually. So some of you guys have been regularly uh, texting us as well as asking us on Discord, you know, how to study organic chemistry. How do I score it in chemistry? And we understand that this is something that's uh, been bothering some of you guys, and we wanted to help you guys out with it, definitely. So, yeah. Um, so, just before we begin, let's uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, so, Sean. Yeah, so hi, my name is Sean. I graduated from JC last year, and I studied H2 and H3 chemistry back in JC. So, my CCA has been table tennis like throughout my entire schooling years. So, it's around like 10 to 11 years of like table tennis. And yeah, I'm, I really enjoy sports and okay, apart from sports, I also like aspire to like, I really enjoy teaching and also aspire to be a teacher one day. All right. Hi, my name is Yi Cheng. Um, I don't really look much like the picture up there because I have no more hair, but I really enjoy music and um, my CCA is my sports club. And yeah, and in my free time, I do enjoy volunteering. Yeah, yeah we're classmates. We are classmates. Yeah, yeah we are classmates. <laughs> yeah, I, I took history chem as well. So, you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, this webinar is going to be a little bit unorthodox. Lah. It's not going to be like, you know, the. I'm sure you guys are very sick of the lectures you all go to in school, you know, just going through content after content. We're not trying to do that here. Instead, we're really just trying to focus on, you know, quick tips for you guys. So, stuff that you guys cannot necessarily learn in the classroom, uh, the things that we have learned personally. Um, from experience. So we've gathered not just our own experiences, but also we've consulted some teachers as well as like some of our seniors as well. So we've gathered a lot of information here and um, you guys can use it. Lah. You guys can use these tips that we have um, to answer sort of like questions more effectively and absorb the information from your lectures more effectively. Hopefully, yeah. So um, yeah, if this is what you're looking for, then maybe sit tight and hopefully we have something to offer. All right, so let's kick it off. Let's start it off with, um, you know, a few study tips and habits that we've collated. You know, how do we study organic chemistry effectively? So tip number one would really just to be prior to prioritize your learning. So like many other subjects, actually, this is quite intuitive, like, you know, not just for chemistry or organic chemistry per se, but an important technique would be to prioritize your sub subtopics, right? So in this case, we have a lot of different, uh, right now we have seven, we've classified seven um, subsets of information in the entire organic chemistry syllabus. So these are skill sets that you need to know, right? And it ranges from nomenclature to reactions and distinguishing tests. So these are the things that you need to know for organic chemistry. But um, how do you prioritize it is something that you know you must focus on. So not every single subset of information up here is something that you should spend equal time and effort on. So we've arranged, we've arranged it based on um, our definition, like what we think is the most important. And this is also derived from um, you know, our experience with doing papers and how often each topic comes up. So for instance, if you look at nomenclature, it's the first thing you guys learn, right? It's the first topic ever, like how to name, how to decide what looks like what, right? So that's the basics of organic chemistry. And while that's important as a fundamental topic, uh, we rarely find questions on nomenclature. So naturally, if you don't find questions in, in the exams on nomenclature, then we should, you know, spend less time on it, right? 
on the flip side, you know, things like chemical properties, mechanisms, uh, reaction, reagents, and distinguishing tests, these are the topics that organic chemistry questions like to dwell on. And thus, you know, for the first three, at least first four, um, things on this PowerPoint slide, from reactions to physical properties, we suggest that you spend maybe 90% of your time working on those. Yeah, so this is how you guys effectively use your time to, you know, make studying more efficient for yourself. Right. So the first question, the most popular question we got, like when you all submitted your responses is, yeah, basically how to memorize reactions or like all those like content heavy knowledge. Organic chemistry is one of like, to, in my opinion, one of the most content heavy like, although there's a lot of application, but still, like when it comes to the bread and butter, the reagents and distinguishing tests, all this, if in the exam, if you forget about it, you are basically screwed for the question because you don't have any content to like back up, any no skeleton at all. So my our advice for like more, this tip number two, although it's the most like common, most of y'all also, I believe most of most of y'all also practice is mind maps. My, my maps in what way? What's the best way to start, like to suit your own personal learning? So we have a few examples on the next few slides where I'll be explaining how like the mind maps can be organized. So uh, firstly, the most common mind map that I think everyone can do is um, a flow chart of, so it, this flow chart, it just shows like a general, like a snapshot or a bird's eye view of all the possible reactions that occurs with a type of organic like, compound. So for in this case, we will zoom in and we we'll see this is a, a topic on hydroxy compounds where you have both alcohols and phenols. And I think we all can agree that this topic has the most, it's, the, it's because just be, it's because like um, alcohol and phenol is the most versatile like compound in all organic chemistry. Like as you can see how many reactions it can happen to form other products or how other products can form into alcohol. So I got this from the back of my, yeah, I was lucky that our school's uh, lecture book provide this like summary checklist at the back of the, the, the lecture book. So we can spend our free time to like, like test ourselves. But if you guys do not have this, you can either like practice your active, uh, what do you call it? active recall? Yeah, active recall and whatsoever. Like after revising for the topic, you just need to draw like, for example, start drawing like the, the middle compound, like an ethanol. And based on your memory, try to chart out as many possible reactions as yeah, as many reactions as possible, and also list out all the reagents and the, type, the name of the reactions. Yeah, so basically I did this for my own notes. This is my notes and yeah, for me, I'm, I believe I'm a visual learner. So color coding and compartmentalization is like one of my, like it helps me study best. So yeah, based on the topic of hydroxy compounds as well, we can take a look at this, basically the same idea as what the other flowchart did, but like there's more like, colors and okay on the high side it looks kind of messy to be honest but I believe that back in that day like when I studied I guess like I use color coding to memorize it like best for example all the reagents and conditions would be like uh wait that's my mouse okay yeah all the reactions will be boxed into like a purple box so all these are the things I need to know and all the special things to look out for like all the notes are like things that maybe all the nuances that can possibly occur in an exam so I'm like kind of ambitious here. I, like, I actually use an A4 size to try to cram everything inside. But if you guys are not comfortable and want like more space for yourself, yeah, sure, go ahead. So yeah, so for kinesthetic learners, like each one. Yeah, so I'm a kinesthetic learner. If you guys haven't noticed, yeah, I like to move a lot and like experience stuff. So if you guys are similar to me and you think that, you know, writing notes is kind of boring, um, here's an advice for you guys. You can try this thing that I, I call active writing. Not, not me, you know, I didn't invent it, but it's called active writing. So essentially how you guys sort of learn, right, is um, how I do it back in the day was that I took pieces of foolscap paper and uh, I would just, you know, basically just scribble down whatever comes to my mind. So I'll do the exact same thing as Sean did, but instead of writing it nicely for reference, I will just write it and, you know, forget about it. So writing, the process of writing helps me remember. Uh, so if you guys are, uh, you know, similar to me, then I think that the best way to go for is to not do what I did and instead of buying paper and throwing paper, right, uh, which is really bad for the environment. Instead, maybe invest in a whiteboard or some sort of, you know, if you have an iPad, you can use it. Get a stylus like this one and then just scribble. And you can keep scribbling and then keep erasing, keep scribbling, keep erasing. And trust me, if you are truly a kinesthetic learner, this will really help you internalize the information. So yeah, so for instance, uh, you know, yeah, just, okay. 
Oh, oh, it's not that. Okay, never mind. All right, doesn't matter a lot, but basically just, you know, draw some stuff and then um, you know, the more you write and the more you draw, the better you can remember it during the exam. It helps us memorize things. Mm. And also another thing I'd like to point out is like most of your have like you know, most of, like most information and mind maps or like notes are actually like readily available on the internet. Uh. But like although yeah it's free notes, it's like actually like free real estate, you can just download it and like use it for your own studying, right? But like I think one advice I'd like to give is like I believe that you guys will only study best with the notes that you make because you understand yourself best, you know how you organize your notes. And other like yeah, if other people's notes are just like doesn't suit your learning, it will just yeah, it will it will not work. So I believe that no matter how much resources available online, it's good for reference, but ultimately when you study for it, I think you have to just make your own notes up. Oh, we have another alternative here, which is to use a, a flashcard in this case also. Like if you guys, okay, it's a bit also environmentally unfriendly, but like if you guys like the method of like, you know, like test, testing yourself each time, so you can like do as what the picture says, I found this photo online honestly but yeah so you can just bend the paper and like you know guess like like test yourself and like check your answers on the back of the paper or whatsoever yeah but okay this is i think a special tip that i don't think you guys will like not everyone will get it but like it's for the past few like mind maps that i explained it's mostly memorizing or like studying by the topics itself however in this case let's take a look at this instead of memorizing like the topics like for example from alkenes from alkenes all the way to nitrogen compounds like another strategy that we can employ like uh, maybe another like separate mind map or notes we can prepare for like tricky questions such as structural elucidation is the use of uh, studying my reagents so what do i mean by studying my reagents so like for example for example the like the compound uh, ammonia ammonia is used as a reactant or reagent in like some of the experiments, for example, yeah, and for some of the reactions, uh, for example, for carboxylic acid, it reacts with uh, ammonia in an acid based reaction. For halogenal alkenes, it reacts in the, the way of, in a reaction of nucleophilic substitution, and for isyl chloride, it's condensation. But if you take a, if you zoom in and take a look at all the different like conditions, right, although they are all ammonia, but their conditions are vastly different, as you can see. So why did I say that it's important for structural elucidation? Later, we will practice on structural elucidation, but we'll, if you take a look, like structural elucidation often tricks students because of how they phrase like certain clues, and you might misinterpret like the clue for, and therefore there might be a cascading effect of how you derive for answer. As you can see from acyl chloride and carboxylic acid, just a small difference of uh, whether ammonia is in aqueous form or whether it's in gas or liquid form can affect the type of reaction and the products that can happen now. So yeah, another way you can study and we will, we will provide these notes at the end of the lecture on how like memorizing my reagents. All right, so um, yeah, so the question, one of the questions we got from um, you know, the Google form is how do we prepare for questions relating to chemical properties? Like? So this includes that, uh, you know, asking about questions on acidity, you know, basicity, um, and even resonance effect, for instance. So we have an, yeah. So essentially, um, when it comes to, you know, this kind of questions where they require you to explain short answer questions, right? Um, in organic chemistry, like there are quite a few. So to me, it's, it sounds kind of, I guess, uh, you guys have always heard this phrase, la, I'm sure, you know, organic chemistry is just memorized one, la, you know, and um, while that's true to a certain extent, some things must be memorized, but we do believe in the cliche saying that, you know, understanding always comes first. And the reason we say this is because it really does help you internalize the information better. And I know it sounds kind of abstract, la, so we're going to go in depth into it later, give you a few examples. But for now, um, what do I mean by, you know, understanding comes first? So instead of just glossing over the topics, I'm sure you guys have gone through resonance effect inductive effect, steric hindrance, things like that. And, um, you know, maybe some of you guys understand it fully, maybe you guys don't. But personally, when I was studying it, I found it very struggling to understand, very uh, difficult to understand, you know, the concept of resonance. Uh. I didn't understand what it meant, like what, what does resonance effect mean? You know, what, what does delocalization mean? And it was very hard for me to visualize it. So I took a long, long time trying to sort of like get those fundamentals in. And uh, believe me that it paid off, uh. you know, afterwards, you know, in H3, in H2, even in the, in, in like, 
Olympic training, right? Um, resonance effect comes in all the time. And my, maybe it's not as relevant to you guys, but personally speaking, when you guys build the foundations up early and sturdily, it's, it's a good investment. So if you guys haven't done that yet, you know, perhaps con consider going back to the earlier topics and you know trying to explore these topics a bit more. If you don't even realize you have nothing, if it's something you don't understand, perhaps you can consult our teachers or just text us, you know, anytime on the Discord channel and we will help you guys out with it. Yeah. So here's what I mean by understanding, right? Um, so you guys probably know, this is not, this is not organic chem, lah, but you guys probably know like uh, the concept of acidity, correct? So um, in secondary school, I'm sure we all learned that you know, acidity is based on, that this is, this is like, you know, blanket phrase that says, okay, strong acids are acids that dissociate completely in water, right? To give H plus ions or protons. And um, while this is true on the surface, it creates a misconception in many, including myself, that um, there goes something like this, you know, like acidity is directly linked to H plus, right? The, the presence of protons and maybe the concentration of protons even. And that's not exactly true. And that's not going all the way. You get what I mean? And that's because the strength of the acid, as we learn in JC, uh, is represented by pKa. I'm not too sure if you guys have learned that yet. It's okay if you haven't, just bear with me for all, okay? So that's dependent on Ka as well. But what determines Ka? K, pK and Ka are just, uh, just, just names for values. Uh. And the, the thing that determines Ka is the stability of your conjugate base, which is, in this case, the anion, A minus, right? Um, and, and yeah, so this is a classic example of like, personally like, for myself, this is an experience that I had uh, where I didn't really fully understand the concept of acidity. It seems very simple, you know, uh, dissociation, proton comes out, right? Forms a conjugate base. But what causes the proton to come out so easily? What causes HCl to dissociate more easily than say ethanoic acid? And the answer lies in the stability of the anion. If the anion, if the conjugate base is um, more stable, then the acid would be more dissociate more readily. Lah. So it'll be a stronger acid. So this is some of uh, just, just an example for you guys to illustrate how deeply you guys can go. And once you do that, answering questions will be a breeze, trust me. Yeah. Uh yeah, so these are some other examples. Um due to time constraint, we'll just skip it. Lah. Yeah. If you guys want to know more, just text us also. Right. Yeah, so okay, the last tip that we'll give, okay, although it sounds like we're going to contradict ourselves, but the last tip, the, the last tip that we'll be giving is that um, if you guys want to be really pragmatic on what to study in an exam, right, you can always go to this link, or in other words, the H2 syllabus. So yeah, if you don't, if you're not sure like what to even study or what does Cambridge even want from you, like, so I'll be going, now I'll be going through like maybe an example for like, for like this topic is on carboxylic acid and like imagine if you have all those like chemical properties that you don't know what, what to compare with or like you don't, don't even know like yeah what to even focus on for studying you can take a look at the learning outcomes for example in the learning outcome c we can see that um what cambridge probably wants is that they want to comp they want us to understand how to compare acidity between like carboxylic acids and its derivatives are so for a start, when I saw this in the learning outcome, then I know that taking notes will be important for this. Yeah, so as you can see from my notes, a snapshot of my notes, like we'll be com I, I was comparing the like how reactive each of them were from acyl chloride to like amide and using like estimations such as inductive effect and also, okay, leaving groups are uh, very uh, H3 kind of thing, but yeah. Uh, other than that, inductive effect will be quite familiar. I hope it's familiar with you guys to use to explain why for example, like acyl chloride is so strong that it can just react with water to form uh to form what <laughs> to form carboxylic acid, yeah, to form carboxylic acid. So yeah, another example will be like another explaining question. You can see, I think your teachers might have focused on some like command words, although I didn't really listen to that that to them that in depthly in, in depthly in class, but like yeah, explaining should be should be like explaining like, in other words. <laughs> So we see explaining like relative ease of hydrolysis of acyl chlorides and ethyl chlorides and aryl chlorides. This may not be in your lecture book. Like maybe, yeah, maybe you may have, you may have to like do cross referencing to find out like how to compare. Okay, but thankfully my school's lecture book was good. So like yeah, I managed to just call a piece of paper and <laughs> and use it as my revision material. All right, so now I'm going to be going through um, reaction mechanisms. This is another topic that you guys really wanted us to go through. And yeah, we can see why. Re re reaction mechanisms can really get very sticky and tough. So yeah, let's get right into it. So um, there are two types of reaction mechanism questions that we've identified. So the first one is your standard reaction mechanism questions. 
So the standard ones include the ones that you guys have learned, you know, in your syllabus. It's just in the lecture notes, you know, you can just access it anytime, right? So these include, um, usually they use, you know, an R group. Lah. They'll just put an R and then, for example, this will be like, uh, you know, an unknown alcohol, for instance. Then they'll use these kind of structures to sort of illustrate the reaction mechanism. So this is how you know it's a standard reaction mechanism because they don't give you weird compounds. Um, so the way to do this is, just really like okay really just practice a lot like because you know that there's only a set type or a set number of questions that can come up and we've identified these um you know topics for you here so there are about five different types large subsets of um types of reaction mechanisms they might ask you to draw from free radical substitution to all the way to nucleophilic addition so i'm sure you guys are familiar with this by now if you finish the organic chemistry syllabus as well um, you know, you also should try to prioritize this as well. Lah. So for instance, free radical substitution nearly never comes out in A levels. Uh, it probably doesn't come out in your exams anymore as well because it's just so standard. Um, the rest of it does come out from time to time, but at the same time, there are only a finite number. So you guys just try to memorize it and practice as much as possible, right? So the next thing you guys want to do when you're sort of revising is to check this. Uh, when, you're, when you're doing your question size, to have a mental checklist of what you need to write. So this is very important because if you want to score all the points for your reaction mechanism questions, you must really uh, get every single part correct. And I guess that's kind of pedantic, like you guys might be thinking, but uh, you know, it's also technically free marks to the examiners. So you guys got to understand that as well. So here are some things you know, that we've written down. Might not be exhaustive, depends on the question, definitely. But these are the typical things that students like ourselves used to leave out. So the first one is type of reaction. This is quite simple, you know, like, Free radical substitution, you must write all the initiation, termination, things like that. Um, if it's a nucleophilic substitution, what type of nucleophilic substitution, right? Is it SN1, SN2? And just specify as much as possible. The key to getting the, those points, right, is to be as casual as possible. So if you think you need, you might want to specify SN1 or SN2, just do it, right? If you can specify something, make it more specific, okay? The next thing is charges. This is very important, and this charges point ties down to the last point as well, which I'll get on to later. So, Remember your charges. So if let's say, you know, something gets protonated, right? And there's a positive charge on it, write it. Don't forget it. That's very important. One plus or minus sign um, that's missing will cost you a lot of marks. Yeah, and you don't want to do that. It's quite painful. Huh? Mm. And arrows is very important. So for instance, like our teacher always tells us, the arrows must be very specific. So if let's say you want a nucleophile to attack an electrophile, right? It must be pointing here, not somewhere else, not a vague direction. But it must be pointing directly at what you want it to be attacking. And if it's not specific, you'll lose marks as well, right? Uh, sometimes, sometimes this one is, uh, you know, is a bit, is a bit ambiguous like, in the sense that you might, you don't always have to do it. But depending on what kind of reaction you're drawing, if it's something that you know for sure, uh, that has a slow and a fast step, for instance, your SN1 reactions, write it down as well. Be as specific as possible, as we said. Leaving groups, remember this also ties down to the last part, right? Leaving groups, um, you must remember to write it down. So, for instance, if let's say uh, an OH minus group leaves the compound, right? You must write it out in the next arrow as well. Make sure that nothing is missing. And the last point will be to balance up. And this ties into your charges. Balance all the charges, balance all the atoms. Make sure that on both sides of the equation, nothing is missing. Yeah, so that's it, that's about it. Right, so moving on to uh, the harder part, right? This is also something that we struggle with lah, quite a bit in H2 and H3. Uh, unseen reaction mechanism questions. These are kind of rare in H2 actually, but um, it's not, it's not uh, super, super uncommon. Like you encounter them once in a while. So the main thing to do, right, is don't panic first. When you see some weird compound that they give you, right, we'll show you an example later. Um, number one thing to do is not to panic because you need to remember that no matter how weird that looks like, the compound looks like, um, you know, you have already learned everything that you have to learn like, for reaction mechanisms. So you just really need to apply what you have learn. So actively recall it and try to apply. And one tip that we can give that sort of blankets this entire organic chemistry uh, topic is always remember to compare and contrast. And this would, this motive will come in now uh, during structural elucidation as well. So you guys just keep up for it, right? Okay, now we're going to go through um, an actual question to make it less abstract for you guys, because I, I know it's a lot of information for you guys. Maybe you guys want to put it into practice, right? So um, this is a question that we took from one of the some school's paper, I'm not too sure. But essentially, one look at it and you know that it's, it's something that's quite quite uh, sticky. Like you see you see an epoxide, uh, you know, like oxy, it's called oxyrain. I've never heard of that in my life. Um, and it's kind of daunting, right? So let's try to use those tips that we learned to sort of um, solve this question, right? So let's just look at part 
two. Part one, we really don't answer. So I'll give you guys um, three minutes, three minutes, try to attempt it if you can, and we'll go through it afterwards, okay? I'm gonna go get some water for Sean and I. Okay, three minutes. Um, we'll come back at 8.34. Yeah, okay, all the best. from a technical break i hope you guys had enough time to do it if not it's all right so let's take a look at this question together yeah um so right off the bat right uh there are a few things that you might realize when you're reading this question okay so first of all for all unseen type reaction mechanism questions right wait am i i'm muted already okay, i don't know if i i don't know if i was cut off just now but anyways yeah, I'm still yeah, you, you can hear you can hear you can hear okay, yeah okay. thanks lizard <laughs> so um for all unseen type questions right um they always give you steps. They always guide you along. So you don't have to. You're not like thrown into the deep end. Like you know, they won't say like, okay, do this and get this, right? They'll just they'll tell you step by step. All right. So in this case, there are three steps, which means intuitively you will need to draw three reactions, uh, like three small reactions, right? So first of all, um, right, we we see that the first step will be the protonation. So what does protonation mean? I'm pretty sure you guys know protonation means basically the addition of a of a proton, uh, H plus from HGO plus. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have seen this molecule before, but um, it's quite common in this in this kind of like unseen question types, right? It's quite common. So H2O plus is basically just uh, a proton in water. Lah. So it's, it's protonated water in a sense, and it's basically what you get when you when uh, H plus reacts with water, right? So you draw it like that, okay? Um, yeah, so there's a lot of, there are two schools of thought. Lah. Some people think that, you know, you can, you can just get away with just writing it like this in a reaction mechanism. But personally, I like to draw everything out. If you can just draw everything out in a in a, in a, um, in a diagram, diagrammatic form instead of just writing like H3O plus, because that can be kind of ambiguous sometimes. Lah. So don't do this, do this, right? So uh, the first step will really be to see what's going on. Lah. So if let's say you know oxygen is being protonated by H3O plus, it basically means that H3O plus gives one hydrogen, right, one proton over to oxygen, which is this molecule over here, right? And sometimes okay, the hard part, right, is really determining where this proton goes up. But if you guys have more experience with um, drawing mechanisms, you'll realize that, you know, electronegative atoms like to take positive stuff, right? So if you have an electronegative atoms here, or oxygen, yes, two lone pairs, right? Two lone pairs will attract these positively charged uh, protons in a sense. And so, yeah, so you will naturally go to the O, to oxygen, right? So what you will get is something like this. Give me one sec, huh? I'm going to write here. All right, so you have, the oxygen over here. Pardon my terrible handwriting. So this is what I mean by arrows. Uh, it's not the best 
uh, example, but you want to try to draw it as specifically as possible, not in between the two atoms or anything like that. All right, okay. Don't forget the charges. All right, and then afterwards, remember to push the arrow all the way. Okay, some people just stop here, but you need to push all the way to the charge. All right, it's the flow of electrons. You can't just, uh, just you know, leave it here. Then there will be two electrons just stranded, not knowing what to go. All right, so moving here, you get a protonated oxygen, and that's your first step done. All right, that's the first step done. So you see, uh, three marks for three steps, right? So even if you don't know how to do the further, the other steps, right? Just try to do as much as possible, right? And you must remember to put H two O. Right, so there's balance, right? You see the charges are balanced and the atoms are balanced. That's great. So the next step will be the ring opening. Okay, big words here, big words here. Some, might, some of you might not know what that means. That's okay. Of a protonated oxygen, which you have already, due to a nucleophilic attack. All right, so here's the thing, right? Nucleophilic attack, that sounds very, very familiar, right? If we go back to just now that slide, which I'm a bit lazy to, but it's okay. Let's do it. So nucleophilic, see where nucleophilic, see where nucleophilic occurs? Two places, nucleophilic substitution or nucleophilic addition, right? So in this case, will you think it's a nucleophilic addition or substitution? You guys can't respond, so I'm just gonna answer the question. It'll be nucleophilic substitution, right? And um, that's because there's nowhere to add it to. An addition requires typically a double bond, right? In this case, there's no double bond, so you, you can't add it anywhere. And um, so nucleophilic attack, right? It could either be SN2 or SN1, am I right? Uh, if we're saying it's nucleophilic substitution. But in this case, because they specified attack, we can infer from this word that it's not going to be an SN1 reaction. It's going to be a real end attack, right? If not, it won't be an attack. It will just, the, the leaving group will just leave first, right? So you assume that it's an SN2. And a lot of assumptions, I understand, and it comes with experience. Lah. But these kind of little words, you, want, you must try to um, you know, grasp these clues and uh, you know, try to make it work for you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, Here's where, here's where the comparing and contrasting comes in, uh, help, comes in very handy. So if you see here, where, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how the reaction one mechanism works. So we have the, we have the reactant and with the product, right? So you want to start comparing these two and see where your mechanism comes in. This is where most people get stuck, right? Ring opening, what does that mean? So if let's say water a water molecule does a nucleophilic attack on this, where do you think it will attack on this protonated thing? Where do you think it will attack? Would you attack on the carbon? Would you attack on carbon here? The oxygen here? If there's a H, of course. Where would you attack? Right? So the answer would definitely be similar to your, your standard SN2. You like, will try to attack um, the less electron rich atoms. And in this case, it's just this carbon. And if you guys may, you might you be wondering, like, you know, like why this carbon and this not, not this carbon? The answer is it's the same because it's a, it's a magical molecule. Uh, so, so yeah, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Um, and if you guys sort of visualize it uh, in your head, you realize that if you attack this molecule, over, this carbon over here, right, and it pushes over here, you'll get this side. And all you're left with is just, um, you'll get a H2O here. I'll show you, don't worry, it's a, it's a bit hard to imagine. All right, so let's just draw it out now. So once you know what's going on, where what's attacking what, right, then you can start piecing it together. So the second step will be protonator oxy, okay. Okay, uh, it's personal, personal preference whether you, you want to draw the circle or not. Uh. Um, I don't think it really matters in the exam whether or not they will penalize you. I don't think so. So here you go, taking the carbon, pushing it back up. Remember, push up to the, um, the positively charged oxygen, right? Like this, and then you can draw it out like this. This is a tricky part, right? Sometimes people forget to count the carbons. I also do that a lot of times. So uh, must remember to count how many carbons there are. Try to double check this part over here and then you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay, so two carbons and then you have yet again an oxygen, uh, uh, sorry, positively charged oxygen over here, right? So that's your second step done. And if you want to check the charges add up and the number of oxygens, hydrogens and carbons all add up. So that's great. So last step, right? Last step. Um, oh. Actually, I missed this part, my bad. Mm -hmm. You, uh, yeah, as in, but like it's another clue. You, they already gave you what, you know, the, the um, answer is, which makes it even easier for you guys. Uh. But even if you don't have that, you should be able to figure it out. So if you know the result, you can just figure it out. Uh. Mm. Okay, so last one is deprotonation. So similar to the first one, protonation means adding an H plus, deprotonation just means taking it out, right? So oxonium ion is just the one that you derived previously. And if you deprotonate it, you will yield the product, which is this. And if you look at it, right, they actually look pretty similar, apart from an extra H and positive ion here, uh, positive charge here, ion. Yeah, so you just 
transfer this here and then afterwards do it. So same thing, like this, like this. Once again, my handwriting is pretty nasty. I uh, hope you guys understand this. So yeah, uh, the last one, what triggers this is yet again, another hydrogen, uh, another water molecule. And how do you know this? How do you know the water is acting as a nucleophile once again? Um, first of all, they didn't introduce any other nucleophile, right? You only have HCO plus in aqueous solution. So there's only, uh, the only feasible nucleophile is the water molecule. But even if you didn't know that, they already told you that there'll be a regeneration of H3O plus. And you know that one H plus uh, ion is leaving. That means that you must have another water molecule doing the job for you, right? So just some deduction work, comparing and contrasting. And remember to draw the lone pairs. Here you go, and then push back up, right? So what you, what you get is your final product, which is this very nice uh, alcohol over here. And also don't forget your HCO plus. And that's how you do it. So once again, your charges add up, you know, number of atoms add up and you're done. There's three marks in the back. Yeah, hope you guys got the answer. If you have any questions on this, you can ask me afterwards, right? Let's move on. Do you need some time to take it down or? Appreciate sure not take, take it down. Take a break. Or take a break. Do huh? you want to take a break? You're not going to respond, man. Uh, <laughs> because we're moving on to structure and elucidation is uh, last, the last part of our- This is a content heavy. Yeah, yeah. Very content heavy and there's a lot of practices. So if you all can take a very short break, I guess. Yeah, just take a break. I'll take like a two minute break. Go toilet, you know. Yeah, and prepare your pen and paper because we'll be trying out some questions as well. Yeah, I think a big, a big part of like chemistry is really just like practicing, making sure that you guys not just learn and absorb the information, but apply it as well. Yeah, um, pretty sure the room is full, bro. Yeah, it looks, it yeah, looks okay. good. Yeah, okay, so basically later, Sean actually took the liberty to prepare some like MCQ questions. He's very good with slides. And, uh, yeah, don't say that. Later, later, it don't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's damn good. It's actually very good. You all will be blown away. Um, I don't know how you did it, but so basically, uh, if you haven't signed up on the class point, it's a bit too late. Uh. I'm pretty sure the room is full. But it's, it's okay. It's, the yeah. questions are there. You can just like mentally just like give yourself an answer. Yeah, or you guys can like, you know, yeah. type in the chat. Right, oh, yeah. if you're, if you have a, if you're not a coward lah. Kidding, 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 No pressure. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll wait until maybe 45. 45 lah. 45. Another minute or so for you guys oh. to, to relax a bit, get some water. In the meantime, you guys have any questions thus far? You can send it to the chat or just unmute yourself, you know? We're all friendly people. Ah, let me just get some water. I'm parched. It's not muted. Okay. It's completely breaking. Oh. Hi Lizard, how are you? That wasn't him, I don't know. That wasn't him? Excellent. I think it's your time to share. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm a junior. Take caught or take caught. Dude, I still can't believe it. That's so cool. Eh? Yeah. Like, it just updates in real times. Eh? So if anyone leaves, you'll know. If you all leave, uh, Sean is coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay i guess let's continue yeah we'll uh, before that there's a question you are yeah. going to press it now what well, is the question all right you combine all the steps into one for the three-step mechanism for the normal context mechanisms like the one you oh. just showed. oh try not uh no for normal means new right <laughs> yeah i well, think i think can... what he meant is uh, or what they meant is like mm. uh I think it's possible for you to just combine the in like mm. one one. It's not it's not in one arrow. Like you definitely need to show the different steps with the different arrows. That's why if they say three arrows, uh, if three parts, right? So you should get like one to the other, then one to the Wait, other. Wait, does it mean like can you like from here move like okay? use the same water molecule and attack? Is it or like I think you don't need to split this into two can steps? Can It's possible. Yeah. It, I mean, what we suggest is you don't because um. That would either involve you using the same water molecule to attack. In this case, it's lucky for you lah, that the um, living group is coincidentally the new nucleophile. But most of the time, it's not. It might not be the case lah. So when you're drawing large mechanisms, especially you know in H three context, for instance, uh, what happens if you do it this way? 
is that um, you will be introducing a lot of a lot of living groups. Unless you put the H2O at the arrow there, like minus yeah. H2O, uh, we suggest you don't do it. But if you know how to present it, definitely, then you won't be penalized for it. Lah. Yeah, you can try it, you can try your luck and, you know, practice makes perfect. Lah. If you can represent it well, anything's possible. Yeah. Do you need to draw the transition state for SN2? Yes. Transition state? The, oh, yes. The one with this. Our... Okay, this one is once again very debatable. There are two schools of thought. Uh, what we subscribe, what we subscribe to is uh, the um, you know the idea that if they give you marks to it, right? You don't want to do something that you're not gonna be rewarded for. So for instance, if you see it's a one mark question and they're asking you for SN2, chances are they're not requiring you for the transition state. And in A level context, most of the time, if they want you to draw uh, an SN2 reaction, they will specify. Uh, if let's say it's more than one mark, then go ahead and draw it, it's worth it. Yeah. But it's just one mark, you know, personally, I wouldn't draw it. Like, it's quite a waste of time for one mark. Just keep, either skip it or just don't draw. You know, but most of the time, SN2 requires you to do it. Yeah. Yeah, right, this. There's no slow step for SN2, right? Hmm? <laughs> it's like you roll and buy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, there's no, there's no slow step. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, you can't remember, I, did, I, I made a mistake before. <laughs> I tried <laughs> to correct the teacher. No, H2, H2 got some weird shit. No, no, Mr. I, in H2, I tried to correct Mr. Wee, but yeah, Mr. Wee, I got. Okay, so, good. okay, anyways, moving on to. Our last part of our webinar today, which is quite a long part, is how to like ace structural elucidation. And why is structural elucidation so scary? It's like for me, because it's as it, yeah, it's an unseen text, it's like an unseen text in like lead or something like that. Because like all the, with all the materials you have, but maybe perhaps these kind of reactions or all the final products may be foreign to you, like because there are so many, 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 many kind of organic compounds that you can form. But from what we get from what your like submissions, right? Some worries that you all have is like how you guys can present your answer properly in an exam. Because you know those kind of seven to nine marks question, how do you present mark so that you can score? Perhaps you could have gotten the final product, but maybe the presentation wise is not enough for you to get the rest of the marks, like the working marks. And how do you all pick up clues properly and to uh, you know think ration like rationally in an exam? Or like when it comes to a situation that very unfamiliar situation, how do you like uh, find a way out of this like maze or this like problem? Yeah. And yeah, so rest assured, we'll be showing you some uh, four step process to how to ace structural elucidation. Okay, so the first step is, as we mentioned at the start, that you need to be very proficient as a, this is a prerequisite. Actually not really the first step, as a prerequisite, how to, to ensure that you are really equipped with the knowledge to tackle structural elucidation questions. So your reagents and conditions must be like spot on. Uh. When I can randomly give you a question like right now, will you be able to solve it? So if you guys have answered the class point, uh, that group, right, in, in your other device, you can on it now and you can try to answer this question. So I think I can just press this, right? I hope it works. Oh, does it cover? All right, All right, one minute for you. Come on, keep, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep if you guys um, don't have the cast point or you cannot enter the cast point app, right? Just type in the chat. Lah. Yeah. Let's go, let's go. It's okay. Is it music? Mm, I don't know. Sir. Oh, yes. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. <laughs> so excited. I don't think there's music. Sir. Oh, no. Well, of course, your side is muted. Oh, that's so sad. Man, we make a cappella. Hey, half of you all, can you all try it? Try it out. We'll stop at one minute and we'll cut one minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's only one minute. Why no one put C? Yeah? The answer is C. Yeah. Mm. Okay, it looks like it's quite difficult right. between two solid, options. Solid, solid, solid. I like this course. It's good. But you know what else I like? I like Discord as well. That's why you all should join it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wait, it goes as I think uh let's stop at like, 15 seconds. Alright. Come on, let's go, let's go. Let's go. What hey, they're so engaged there. Eh? I love it. I'll, I'll expect some people to be sleeping by now. It's side, let's make it 130. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think okay. that's it. Yeah. Can. Okay, I'll be closing submission in five, four, three, two, one, and close. Okay. Yes, I think y'all can see the graph also, right? I think there's a big debate. Okay, okay. okay there's a big debate between like option B and option D. And the correct answer is 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. For review. And okay, for those who get it wrong, it's okay because there's a reason why I chose this question. Because yeah, I, I always stumble with all these keywords. As you can see from the answer key. My point, the point I'm trying to prove in this case is that even if you are very really strong in your reagents and conditions, you memorize perfectly, but However, when it comes to exam, with all these nuances that maybe because of your panic mind, you might just blank out. And just when you see H2SO4 with heat, you just get excited. And the first thing, maybe the first thing that comes to your mind could be the, the not the right answer. So the right answer is actually elimination from alcohol to alkene. But if you take a look at the rest of the options, right, everything is actually pretty similar to each other, isn't it? So I think like this brings us back to the point about like how you can make your, a separate note for like studying for structure elucidation is to study by reagents. For this case, H2SO4, there are many, many different cases of how H2SO4 will react with different kinds of organic compounds and give you different kinds of products. And all the minor, like the reagent, minor nuances in the different, and uh, the differences in the reagent condition, right, will like, make a world of difference uh, in this case. Imagine if you, like, you interpret this question wrongly and you subsequently try to like, assume you assume the wrong functional groups and yeah, there goes your marks. Like, it's like there's no ECF or anything. It's just bye-bye. But yeah, so my point is trying to prove like this. And okay, for still for distinguishing tests, the same like preaching and like whatever, yeah, all the law sort thing that I said just now applies here as well. You've got to make it crystal clear. But I would like to bring your attention to like, like something special about this. It's like, you've got to know their alternative names. So for the case of iodoform tests, like, okay, this question, this, this part is, should be more familiar to you guys because you guys always see this phrase in the exam, right? And when you see this phrase, maybe at the start, you might not think of iodoform, but as you practice more, you start to like, uh, oh, interpret, okay, iodoform test means that presence of what and what, two different kinds of compounds, right? I will go through later. But okay, for this, for this, maybe this might not be much seen by people, but this may be a special tip for you guys, is tonus reagent. This is just an example, but in the exam, there's a chance that they might give its alternative name. Like just it's not tolerance reagent, but equals silver nitrate mixed with NaOH. And you guys might just blank out, like, wait, what's that? So imagine if you just blank out just because you maybe you didn't revise like in-depthly enough, you might just waste your marks away. Yeah. So that's like, quite unfortunate. Another advice, okay, another pop quiz also. <laughs> another advice. Okay, we just Try this MCQ first, and yeah, I'll start start the thing again. You guys can feel your answer. Go go go. Wow, they didn't pass there. This one fast guy, Speedy, Lightning McQueen or something. Oh, my nose up. Hey, hey. So up. <laughs> There's not gonna be a single person who get it wrong now. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Spoiler, I think I think Karen here. Okay. <laughs> well, they are quite up, sir. Up to the bar, bro. I didn't know this, eh. <laughs> oh, oh my god, my English. What is reaction has taken place? What? <laughs> 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 oh my god, pardon the poor English. <laughs> yeah, 15 more seconds. Oh, I guess that's all. Yeah, no, okay, no. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, you guys got it right. <laughs> Moments of yours. So, yeah, okay, this, what's this pop quiz trying to prove? Like, okay, I was quite impressed, but like, you also got to know, like, even though if you know the distinguishing test, like, okay, this test proves the presence of what, right? You, when it comes to un presenting your answer, you also got to say what kind of reaction has taken place. That's the thing that I missed out, like, at the start. And, like, when it comes closer to the exam, I realized, oh no, this is actually important. Whether it's like acid hydrolysis, whether it's oxidation, all these, yeah, all these names must be known. So as you, as you can see from the reaction like scheme here, uh, Toler's reaction, Toler's reaction uh, proves the presence of aldehydes, if I'm not wrong. But then if aldehydes, aldehyde and something else, I remember, but I think ketone, yeah, aldehydes. <laughs> so what actually has taken place in this reaction is actually an oxidation from aldehyde to carboxylic acid. While well, there's a reduction from Ag plus to um, like to Ag, so it's a, this is actually a redox reaction that maybe you you might miss out when you study when you look through your lecture book because you might think okay this is the 
reaction scheme might be insignificant. But actually, the name of the reaction is actually important. So, okay, moving on to step two. Okay, the rest, this is how like I'll do it in the exam, but you might agree or disagree with me, but this, I just want to share how I do it. So, annotation. I think when it comes to such like long and daunting questions, right, you might actually like, blank out, like, oh no, there's too much information. What do I do? So, first of all, I think if you have a, use a highlighter, usually go ahead. If you use pencil, also go ahead. So you got to like maybe highlight those important like information that and also annotate subsequently. Okay, actually I never see this question before, but like <laughs> you can just randomly. Yes, the point is not to like <laughs> show how to solve it, but like like you can just do highlighting here and you know from this kind of like thing like compound K dissolved in HCl. So like what can you infer from this reaction? You can maybe it's basic. It's K basic. K might be basic. And feel free, just freestyle and annotate. The point is to not like, this is not your presentation part. This is just like solving for yourself. It's like a detective, like I always treat it as a detective, like, like test for me. Yeah. Like I'm a detective trying to solve it. And also like rationalize on the way, like you can annotate, feel free to annotate on any part of your questions. And like, yeah, you know, you can just like do random like annotations like, oh, what's the present? This could be a present or something on this. And the next clue might be a pre presence of like a phenol group whatsoever. And at the end, when you realize you annotated everything, right, you can actually piece together and solve the answer. But after solving the answer, like before you actually put it as your final answer, like before you're locking your answer for like a, who wants to be a millionaire question, right? You got to actually like check, ensure first, like whether your organic structures satisfy the conditions, like whether the number of carbon is correct, whether the functional groups actually like do the do the right thing. Yeah, and give the right products. And whether it satisfies other miscellaneous conditions, such as, for example, whether it's chiral, non chiral, whether it uh, has cis trans uh, isomers. Or, yeah. So, whether all these like, minor stuff also need to check. And okay, I believe this is the part that you guys want to know how to present your answers properly. So, you know, like I would say, presenting answer comes last. Like when you start, like, when you annotate and everything, solve, you got to solve the question first before you present your answer. But in the time, in the event of a time constraint, like you know that you can, there's no way you can finish it. I think, yeah, you just go ahead and do step four first. So we will split this into an observation and deduction table. So observations, you just need to like quote, <coughs> like, you know, quote what the passage says. But you can keep it short and sweet now because this is not the part that scores you mark. But there is a deduction that scores you mark. So what do we need to write in the deduction, right? For example, what kind of reaction they can place. So for example, if I say just now, Tolan's reagent, if there's a positive result, what does it show? It's an oxidation reaction has taken place. And therefore, what does P, like for this case, what does P contain? P will contain, if, for example, now, if it reacts and with, yeah, it reacts with 2,4-D and pH, we know that it's a condensation and P could be either one of these. And yeah, for the case of Q also, Q reacts with sodium, so it's an acid metal reaction. So what could Q contain? And if there's no reaction with this, what could Q be? Subsequently, yeah. So I guess now we have, we can like, I will demonstrate this and you guys can try it first. I'll give your, this is actually a pretty tough question, although it's three marks. I'll give you all five minutes. Okay, the keyword here is suggest. So that it just means, it doesn't mean that you need to write out the whole paper as I explained in step four. You just need to find out what is this, this, and this. I'll give you all five minutes and yeah, go ahead and try. This is a pretty interesting question. Try it, try it. Uh, we were both stunned by it. Uh. <laughs> if you guys don't have a piece of paper or you think like, this is too easy, uh, you can chat with us as well. Yeah. Vignesh asks, can we label the reaction on the question paper since we're submitting a booklet instead of writing out the full observation? Oh, which, what does that mean? It means you annotate. Uh, so like you annotate on the question paper itself. Right. Like, full observation. What, what does instead of writing out the full observation mean? This thing, like you know, is it like you go to the paragraph, right? And you oh, like they, they just the answer. Right? That's the answer. I'm, 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 I'm not sure. As in, as in, like, is yeah. he mean like whether or not he's allowed to write the yeah. answer? I mean, just, just don't know. <laughs> this guy likes to cut corners, uh, big Nash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. I mean, that's not a bad thing. But um, you you have to write down the yeah. Uh, don't do that. Try not to do that. Not especially not for A levels. Uh. Write it in the blank space given to you. Don't write it on the sides. Don't point arrow and all that stuff. Yeah, it, yeah, but it's not worth it. Like. Because A levels, like, you know, the markers may not, they, they have the power to choose, like, whether mm. they want to mark it or not. Like, yeah. yeah, if obviously. it's a bad day, you know, not enough beer for them or something, then, like, that's it. Uh. 
they're not gonna oh, move. Like, yeah, when it's too messy and then maybe they need to squint and look at your answer, then they are like, nah, then you just cancel it. Then mm. shag. <laughs> yeah, shag. Shag. <laughs> so yeah, just try not to. If you can, if you have no time, then resort to that. Lah, last resort. But what we suggest is minimally write out whatever structures you are doing on the white piece of paper. Like the white part, not like on the question, you know? Yeah. Okay, I'll give them like two more minutes. Uh. Running yeah. out of time. You want to go through the last question also? Mm, see how, see how. See how long we have. Wow, this is correct. Is that a table method? Are flowcharts okay also? Uh, yes. Yeah, flowcharts are okay. fine also. As long as you really illustrate how you get there. Like what yeah. reaction tells you what. Just make sure the content is there. Well, how you present it doesn't matter as much. Like table form, flowchart. As long as it's concise and, you know. I think, yeah, the, as long as you get the reaction names, functional groups present, I think, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah. For, for me, I would do that as a, like my own working, like a flowchart in my whether in my head or when I anyhow scribble. But when I give come when it comes to like present presenting the answer, I'll try to present in a table format. Like the answer will be like more obvious, like what kind of reaction occurred and therefore what has come up, what functional group present. Okay, one more minute. Uh -oh. Yeah, how much you want to bet? None of them are doing it right now. They're probably just like using their phone next to me, after It's okay. I'm like, I think you're all, I think you're all. Alright, man. Hope you guys have been learning some stuff. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we hope that. Oh, really? Are we all have been keeping track of the number. Oh, for real? Where's the number? 37. Yo, it was 40 just now, man. You know, 40 lah. Okay, I'm going to plus, plus the 3. Plus 4 of us. Oh, it's solid, ah. no one leave. Ah. I mean, if I leave, Sean will start crying eh. yeah, and I'll compass also. I'll just start crying. Imagine, yeah, the self-esteem. Two good men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have bad news for you guys later. <laughs> oh, we'll be back. Hey, hey, hey. hey, 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 hey. Yeah, Say that after that. Oh, Keep going. Yeah, hey, no, no, hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Save those bad news for yourself, man. I'm not hearing Okay, it. okay. I think if you guys have done it, I'm so proud of you all. If, <laughs> if you want to do it, I just want to watch the show. Okay, I'll try my best to, like, squeeze everything in this page. So this question, we are greeted with uh, compound J. Pretty big, big compound. Honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is there's a, it's probably an aromatic structure really, like there's a benzene ring, because the ratio of C to H is almost one to one. So it reacts to form uh, this K when it's uh, with this reagent and condition. And instantly when we see this, we should be thinking of a reduction. So when reduction occurs, what do we think of? Like what kind of organic compound can be reduced to something else? So the first thing that comes to my mind, uh, carboxylic acid, probably. Uh, ketone? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, and, oh my god, I'm doing so slowly, but and, <laughs> okay. and aldehyde. So what do we, how can we deduce like what gets reduced to what? We, now I would like to bring your attention to the number of hydrogens and oxygen in these two elements. So if we look at K, K is, uh, I'll just do some math, C9H2O3, then now you have compound J, C9H8O4. If we do our literal like math subtraction, we realize that one O went missing and you gain four hydrogen. So 
I'd like to bring you all back to the three different compounds here. When the reduction happens for carboxylic acid, it becomes a, it becomes an alcohol. So there's a loss, oh my, okay, ignore that. There's a loss of one oxygen and there's a gain in two hydrogen. So can we confirm that's the only thing that can reduce? No, right? Because in this case, only two hydrogen will gain. And in this case, there's only four hydrogens. And in this case, and in the real it's like in reality, there's four, four hydrogens that will gain. So that means that on top of a carboxylic acid, either one of them could have been reduced to an alcohol as well. Yeah, it could be reduced to an alcohol for yeah, for ketones and aldehydes. When they get reduced, there's no loss of oxygen, there's just a gain of two hydrogen. So keep that in mind. The next sentence, when J reacted with NABH4, which is a weaker reducing agent, that's a, the product becomes an increase in only two hydrogen. So this further proves my point that on top of a carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid cannot be reduced by NABH4, just for, uh, just for FYI. And so in this case, when there's a presence of two extra hydrogen gain from the re reduction, this further proves my point that either a ketone or aldehyde or a benzene aldehyde is present. So let's like explore further in the yeah, let's let's explore further. Oh draw the benzene. Oh yeah, that's a benzene. Okay, benzene aldehyde. Probably you rarely see it. It looks like this. You can see here. Okay, so there could be three different like possible like cases. So let's take a look further. J is an or orange precipitate with 24 dmph. This further proves our point that it's either a ketone aldehyde or benzene aldehyde, but does not give any precipitate when it's warm with phenylalanine reagent. So this requires your back knowledge again. What kind of your background knowledge? What what's the only thing that can react with phenylalanine reagent? It's an aldehyde. Only aldehydes can react with phenylalanine reagent. So this eliminates our the option of aldehyde being our answer because there's no precipitate given out. So it could be either, the functional groups could be either a ketone or benzene aldehyde. Now with our last clue, K reacts with bromine water to form L. And something peculiar here is there is three bromines. What does this mean? This means this is not only just an electrophilic substitution, but more like- Wait, okay, hold on. Um, just to clarify your, your what's it called your question, right? Um, I think what Sean meant was that, uh, there were three possible, carbonyl groups that could be pos could be pre pre present like, apart from the carboxylic acid, um, the ketone, the aldehyde, and the benzaldehyde. So we consider aromatic and aliphatic. In this case, if you don't understand what aliphatic means, it's just uh, uh an aldehyde that's not connected directly to an aromatic group like benzene ring, for instance. So benzaldehyde is a type of uh an aromatic uh, you know, yeah. Okay. Aldehyde. So you're correct. Yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, you're right. right. So feelings only re reacts with al aliphatic aldehyde. Yeah, that's so why benzaldehyde is. Yeah, then it means the option of an aldehyde. So yeah. we are left with either a ketone or a benzene aldehyde. And now the last clue that we are greeted with is the Br three. That means instead of a normal electrophilic substitution, it's a tri substitution. Tri substitution only occurs for like very peculiar, very peculiar cases. Where it's a phenol, because phenols are super activating groups. Uh, yeah, is it super? No, no, yeah, they are very strong activating groups. So they can afford to make it more electron rich, and yeah, result in a tri substitution. So what are the so what are the clues that we have? First, a phenol group, and now we have either case one or case two, whether it's an aldehyde, yeah, why is why is it a ketone or a benzene aldehyde, and last case we have a. Yeah, we have a uh, carboxylic acid. So let's let's start off with the like benzene aldehyde might be more foreign. So like we might try, we might subconsciously like leave it as a second choice. So let's assume that it is a uh, J is okay, aromatic structure at first. It has a carboxylic group and phenol. And lastly, it has a uh, let's assume it's a ketone group first. Does it satisfy the requirements? That's our, now we are checking. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
9 carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 8 hydrogens and 4 oxygens So yes, it does It does support that it might be J So let's look at the first Like, let's check again J will be reduced to, be, to form K from Li, from lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether. Okay, I think we need another, another sheet. Um, yeah, so back to the, back to this case. So what the, if this is, if this is J and it gets reduced strongly by uh, this strong reducing agent, what will we what will we get? We will get K who is okay. The phenol group doesn't get reduced. It becomes oxidic. As it gets reduced to a primary alcohol, and lastly, this happens. So does this satisfy? Does this satisfy this sentence? Actually, it doesn't. Why? We miss out on a special clue. A very subtle clue that we ignore at the start, a non-chiral molecule. And if we look at this case, there is a special, this carbon is chiral carbon. So this proves that nope, this is not an answer, and nope, it's not a ketone. So let's take a look at another scenario. Okay, wait, oops. I think, I think one example is enough, right? Mm. Okay, let's in order to okay, this is a benzene aldehyde now. In order to satisfy the number of uh, carbon needed, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need an eight and a nine. So this is not benzoic acid anymore. It's more, it's like it's a branch here. So the one in our space. Oh my god, it gets reduced. Okay, my god, bear with me. It gets reduced. This is K. This is this scenario happens. And lastly, uh, like that. Does it satisfy the requirements for K? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 8, 12. Is it? <laughs> Is this correct? Mm -hmm. Go yeah. Ahead. So, and this, and in this scenario, it isn't. Uh, non chiral is a non chiral molecule because we don't have no longer have the chiral carbon here nor here. So yeah, this might this makes sense. This might be the answer. This so this should be the answer. So if we answer structures J, K, and L, we will be J will be K will be okay. I prefer to write. I prefer to do everything in skeletal form because yeah, it's just habit and yeah, it's much faster. But if you guys want to like go back and like try again in like the long form, yeah, then yeah, sure, up to you. <laughs> and molecular okay, formula. Yeah, molecular formula and L. I hope, yeah, this is the answer. So I hope this example can show how my thought process works in the exam. And although I think we are like short of time to go through a second question, when these slides are released, you can just go ahead and try these questions. The template of how to answer the question is also on the slides. And shall we end the webinar? Yeah, here? that's about it.